Father Sky for giving this rain that we much need. It's, it's such a, a beautiful time to stand here and enjoy the rain. On behalf of uh, the Oracle people and our corporation, uh, we'd like to welcome you to this very special place because this place is really special. It is surrounded in all these sacred sites on country here. Jingiwala blagami Rapu Dugun. Jandamani Nyali Garamanyali. Nyali nya nyatan nyatan jen. Garamanyali. Wana wana jang mama la ganu. Google bear. Orapu Dugun. Thank you and welcome. And we pay our respects to our elders past and present and you elders here today. Google bear. And Richard's next, my friend. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Mullen Movie Gateway. And thank you all for coming. You know, we set out to make a new cultural space at the entrance to Mullen Movie. And it had to celebrate the first people of this region. Welcome to the Mullumbimbi Gateway, made by many. We set out to create a new cultural space to celebrate the diversity of our community and to honour the culture of the traditional custodians of this region. I actually am here also to stand as an Arakwa person. So um, on behalf of the Arakwa Aboriginal Corporation, I have a speech from our board of directors. So Jingiwala, I am Annette Kelly, a proud Arakwa Bumbalan woman. Arakal Bumbalan people are the native titles and have lived in the coastal area landscape around the Bayan Shire for thousands of years. We are one of 500 Aboriginal tribes that have cohibited Australia before European occupation. We are the recognised Aboriginal traditional custodians of Byron Bay and Arakal country. We personally would like to thank and recognise the great work of Uncle Digby, Maureen, um, Richard Clark, and the stories told from the Arakal and Bunjalung people through the totem pole. So that is a big thank you from the Board of Directors, um, the Iraqua members, the General Manager, Sharon Saloon, um, staff and our families. Uh, we are connected, we are one, and we are the power to create a sustainable country into the future. So that is the statement and that is uh, <laughs> a lot of wise words if you ask me. Um, my people have lived on the country for so, so long and ooh, <laughs> um, it's really important that cultural knowledge and understanding is shared with the community and included in the conversation because um, it's our country and we'd like to share that with you guys and that allows for cultural awareness and growth together. So thank you. I wanted to share a little about the story of the totem. It's a journey actually, this totem, and it started about 150 years ago, this tallowwood tree growing up at Mount Jerusalem just about the time when the first European settlers came here, the event that took place seven years ago, when that tallowwood tree came down, when the storm came and the whirlwind brought it into the valley, and Tonu came and brought it to the festival. And what do you think about all this hands making the patterns on the back of the boat? Like your hand is here, right? It's Put your hand on it, which one is yours? My one's this one. Yeah. Yeah, so what do you think about that? Um, we keep Kabul connected with our people. We are Kabul people. Kabul is the uh, totem of our people, the um, carpet snake, and um, it's, um, yeah, we're in the Bundjalung Nation. The Bunjalung Nation is made up of 14 other tribes. So Arakal is part of the Bunjalung Nation. And we are known by other Bunjalung people as the carpet snake people. Kabul. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's where the Kabul comes from. The grandfather could smell Kabul from long, long way off. Long way off. He had this affinity with Kabul. Kabul's got a very distinct smell and he keeps the Arakal people safe on country. We are truly honoured by you. Thank you. There were many inspired and visionary artists and leaders and youth leaders and elders from all over the world who came to bless this totem and to put their handprints, as you can see, winding up the totem on the couple are the handprints of everyone who has put their hands and hearts forward to be living this unity and oneness in action. 
and it laid on the forest floor for about a year. And what has happened to it is that when we saw it, it uh, was just laying totally covered in the forest, but there was energy in it. And it had been in there from the land. And when I carved it, it just started coming alive with all these different animals. I mean, have you seen all the animals on it? The turtle sure and the whales, and this is the mother bird. It's a really wonderful moment to be here, Richard, and, and all those who um, have been part of this journey, not just the recent one, but the initial gateway that was created. I'm, I'm especially excited about that totem finding a home, my handprints on there somewhere with my then three-year-old daughters. Um, I remember that festival very fondly, um, and we tried a few times to get it up in, in previous places. At Main Beach, was uh, we were working to try to make it happen, and then the Cavern Bar Centre. But you know what? It took longer, but this is where it should be. There is something very right about um, seeing it here. But, uh, for me, this is uh, collaboration in action. This is an exact example of every different organisation supporting something uh, beyond themselves in a way that they could, whether it be financial, creative, energetic. Um, it was wonderful to see people come together uh, and offer what they had uh, according to what was needed. Uh, and I think we as a community, if we can continue to use these as examples, we'll continue to grow um, and repair both uh, this, the planet, our, our area, and perhaps our community um, as we go forward. So it gives me great pleasure to be here, and I thank uh, particularly this powerhouse next to me uh, for creating something that's really important for our community. Uh, I'm Peter Wood from Arts Northern Rivers. Um, we're a service organisation for the arts across the region here, so we're always on the lookout for supporting really important cultural projects uh, that really do have that sort of community involvement, which of course this does in spades. <coughs> we did say that Arts Northern Rivers has always been a strong advocate for this project since Richard Morden, one of the key drivers of the project, first brought it to our attention. The project seeks to restore and improve a number of sculptural and structural elements that sit at one of our region's most significant jun junctions the gateway to the town of Mullumbimby. In 1988, we set out to create a dramatic new entrance to Mullumbimby. We carved four new sculptures on the riverbank in Mullumbimby. It was the first of the gateways in Byron Shire. Thirty years later, the sculptures were badly in need of repair. In 2018, we spent the whole year applying for funding from the New South Wales Government, and we got it. By the end of the year, Byronshire Council had given us the go-ahead, and on February the 14th, Essential Energy lifted the sculptures out of the ground. To everyone's horror, the white ants had eaten through everything. Even the pelican was gone. Look at that line too, it's tricky that line. This line here, it's very, very tricky. That's the actual mouth line itself. Hi, um, my name is Greg, Greg Bowring. I was one of the sculptors involved in carving the pole. It was a great opportunity, I really enjoyed it. The pole started for me when I met Tonu, who came out to carve a pole for the uplift people and a friend of mine, the Hughes' property, where the pole was sourced from. Um, talking with Tonu, he found out I was a sculptor and invited me to come and carve with him. So it was a great process. Tonu was very much aware of the Indigenous people in the area and wanted to make a totem that represented their values and their, their history. And he did just that with his design. He talked to some elders, from my understanding, and put the creation story down of the goanna and the snake. Yeah, you did a good job, Tonu. He, he did do a great... His style, you know, the way it flows. And Tonu was the one that did the outline of everything. Yeah. Um, Jason and I are the ones that have done most of the grinding, even when we carved it back in the day. 
So he's looking terrific now, isn't he? Huh? Yeah, I think I nailed the head. That's good. I'm, I'm happy about the head. He looks like a goanna. I I probably won't go to too much detail with the claws and everything because the digby are never going to paint him. So I'll just get a good overall form on the, the claws. So was this the last thing that you've carved on on the totem? We touched up the goanna indeed. What do you mean we? You touched up the... Yeah, I did. That's you, right. You did? I did. During his time here, it became evident that Digby had some health concerns. Um, but my mind was put at rest knowing that Rich was here keeping an eye on him. They made a great team and the sound of laughter was never far away. Uncle Digby asked me to come along and to, to do a bit of work with him. And um, he said, we're going to be doing this um, total pole up at um, Billy Nigel. So I thought, well, yeah, that sounds good. Sounds great. And then when we went up there to see it, I went, oh my god, there's a lot of, a lot of handprints and going to be a lot of, a lot of hard work going into it. But um... we are coming to the rainy season, so there will be weather delays, whether you like it or not. Mm. That is going to yeah. happen. Yeah. And yeah. it takes longer for the paint to dry. And yeah. and then there is the factor of everything always takes longer than you expect in these sorts of projects. Always. So there's a few factors here lining up, and yeah. the only thing we can do is our best, and we will. And we will make it happen, and it will be beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> once we once we got the um, started on the painting, and it, it was just natural. We we had to set up places there for the the mattress there for our lamp there to, to lie on it, and because the ground was a bit hard there and all that sort of stuff. So we we had fun times up there just painting. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful area to to paint and. We just had those days there where it was just beautiful and it was just, it, sometimes, sometimes Uncle Digby would be asleep there. <laughs> and, um, you know, those are the memories I'll, I'll cherish for, for the rest of my life because it, it's, a, it's a big part of me that, um, you know, um, to help Uncle Digby paint this beautiful pole there. Party. Oh, I love that. And it's true. But I'll get lucky with you. To my party. Yep. Still I love the colours in it. Make the little pops out. I'm not quite sure with that top end. It'll come. Things will fall into place. You just sit back and, and think about it. The times we live in, but especially who we are as people in Byron Shire, is really calling on all of us to transcend differences and separation and participate together in co-creating expressions of love and unity. And when Richard came with the idea to donate the totem, what came to us is to create a place, a gateway, that will allow people to engage, to come and experience and possibly put their hand on the totem and have a prayer. So we can all co-create together, not just action and project, but also co-create together an energetic 
reality, an energetic way from here, from Malam Bimbi, from the Byron Shire. Yeah! Yeah! Look on God, Richard. Thank look you. on God, look on God. Thank you, Diggy. You're welcome, mate, you're welcome. I love doing what I'm doing. Thank you for asking me to do it. And I really want to thank Richard and the team also for reaching out to the Aboriginal community in our region and particularly seeing Uncle Digby's work here. Uncle Digby holds a very special place in our hearts at Arts Northern Rivers and, of course, the wider community as well. And it's just wonderful to see this edition of, of Digby's amazing um, public artwork, which you can see right around the region, which is just stunning. Congratulations, everyone involved in this. It's been fantastic. Thank you. So this time capsule is containing all these prayers from the leaders and elders and visionary artists from Uplift who are really dedicated towards the conscious evolution of humanity and the planets. And it's being anchored here in this site to be opened in seven generations. And this is a really important concept in many of the indigenous traditions of the world that we really consider how our actions are going to impact the next seven generations and how this coming together here on this site, here at the Gateway, is kind of the ushering of a new era. And it's really no coincidence that the totem is standing now at this time. So Richard, here we are. The beautiful um, panorama that we talked about, which is really important for country. Yep, all these um, important um, pathways that Daniel Hand, and as you all know, Daniel Hand's an incredible artist, all his artworks throughout Mullumbimby. So for Arapa, it's really important that we have our voice here. So um, we got our team together, Belle Arnold. The Belle did the uh, Jingiwala welcome sign. My beautiful niece over here, Nicola Clark, did the, the front poles. And um, she did a fantastic job. I'm a Rakal Bundjalung, and that's a part of the Bundjalung Nation. Um, the Bundjalung Nation consists of around 15 tribal groups or clan groups. Um, we are one of the second largest nations in the country, so Radri being the first. Yeah, very, very fortunate to be Bundjalung, I guess, yeah. Um, <laughs> my mum has always called me my younger sister of creative being since we were very young. So fortunate to have a school that was very abundant of my Aboriginality and, and of course encouraged me to do a lot of things that I do today. A lot of my artworks reflect country. So, um, and that that's that term is widely used, um, not just as its physical access of country, um, like our rivers and our oceans and our waterways, but also the dream time and the stories and our people and what places mean. So a lot of my artwork is inspired by what I see around me and what I've been taught. Um, my nan and her sisters fought very hard here on country um, throughout the early 1960s and way before then um, in trying to claim rights for our lands, which actually empowered a lot of my family to become very outspoken and, and fight for our rights here in country. So we're very lucky to be native title land holders now. Our spirituality is kind of who we are and, and within our being and art is a form of expressing that, just as singing and just as dancing and, and writing and, and speaking in language. So it's a way of identifying features of country. So for many, many years, including the central desert where a lot of these Aboriginals um, symbols have come from they crossed on our song lines over here to the coast and that's why you see it around all around Australia um, it was kind of its own language a lot of Aboriginal people use this to translate between between country and tribes and between peoples so not all Aboriginal people when they crossed across country could understand each language group so they used these symbols um, as a way of communicating as well so they became really historic and symbolic in that sense as well um, Aboriginal people and my people in particular, we live across a large aspect of country. This includes wetlands, um, beaches with middens, um, rainforest, rivers, um, a lot of other wider Bundjalung nations would actually come and gather on country and eat and collect and trade foods and, and share culture. So yeah, that's kind of where the artwork was inspired from and that's why the colours are there. They represent those, those parts of country. We always learnt by um, seeing and doing you know, watching what the birds were doing, watching what the ocean's doing. So the elders were always teaching us. 
sharing those stories of growing up here on country and that connection to country, that love of country, that's what I want to give people. And when you look out at the landscape, you can see all them high points of country. Um, and, the, and these really high points of country are those ancient pathways that Bundjalung people um, travelled by, you know, using the seasons. And um, these pathways were, were used so people can um, gather food and, and medicine plants, um, also to um, attend gatherings and ceremonies. The whole landscape gives us different um, food sources. So living over in the ocean here, we've got all that, you know, bountiful uh, resources of the ocean and uh, certain plants here. But then we go into the rainforest for different types of foods um, and also the, the very important medicine plants too. And looking at the landscape, um, it gives you that really strong sense of um, belonging and, and identity because you know your people's feet walked on this country. You know they attended these really important sites. I've been over, you know, overseas to old buildings and I've touched these buildings going, oh wow, so old, I'm at the Colosseum. But it's like, no, our sites are even older. So respecting our sacred sites, that's really, really important. And I suppose that's why um, I love to go out there and do welcome to countries. For our people, you know, we've just um, been granted our native title claim after 25 years. So we now jointly manage these lands with national parks. We're doing a really good voice here in the Byron Shire with our uh, joint management. Why can't we have a voice in government because you know who can fix our problems? Ourselves. Mullen Market on a Friday morning and it should have rained but it hasn't. Kim thought it was going to be all muddy but it's not. It's so full of food you can't imagine it. People who have grown things and people who are buying things. They don't go and buy food anywhere else. This is where they come. You eat really good vegetables and you're flexy. Uh, you yoga every day. Doing yoga every day. You're the one that I want to be with and they're going to stop. No, never go away. I want you in my hotel room. I want you in public, and we ain't stopping. Uh. When people see us, we ain't stopping, no. Yoga practitioners, I eat you up like a vegetable. 
what's special about the area. It's funny, you know, when I left Newcastle, I was like a black sheep of the family. Um, I, um, the shoes I was wearing, I made myself. Mum and Dad taught me how to make a pair of shoes. The pants and the shirt I was wearing, I made. The traveller's bag I made. I was really into making stuff and creative. And this area, to me, gave me that option to do because I couldn't handle living in the city. And Nolene was my girlfriend at the time for quite a few years. And I said, well, listen, I love you heaps, you know, but I'm going up to the bush to live. I want to have a farm. And um, it, it, there was nature, there was oceans, there was creeks, there was people that were like-minded, there was people doing stuff. And this area just... And I feel part of it. I, I, I feel a real part of the community here. be somewhere within the uh, the Mount Warning caldera that's where the the beauty is and you've got this incredible fecundity and all this mountains so close to the sea you get this wonderful rainfall it's just ideal so many ways it's it's uh, that's what makes it quite unique I mean, there are other places around the world, but either they're in where pol politically you go, mm, do I want to live in that country? Or, you know, there's other issues. Well, yeah, we're very lucky. You know, it's the right mix. No, I've gone away repeatedly. I'm always going away and coming back. It's, there's that mix. There's, you know, there's problems here. <laughs> always has been, always will be. And then there's the exquisite beauty and opportunities here. There's just, you know, it's, it's, it can be a hard place to live. You know, there's a lot of casualties here. A lot of casualties. Uh, my first time, I went, uh, it was three years in Sydney, and then I've done four years in, the, in the, the States. But every time I come back and, oh, God, I'm so glad to be back here. And then the last time I go, that's it, I'm not going away. years have you been here? Since 1981. So that's 40 years. I'm just enormously grateful for the opportunity I had to spend 40 years painting landscape and still life and people. The things that made me oh, just melt with joy, even though it didn't make me much money, 
Um, I was never told, go and get a job by Centrelink. They all said, you just keep painting and putting in your profit and loss statements. And it's, you know, so, yeah, I obviously chose the right place, Richard, at the right time. So, no, and I'm grateful for that. And my friends, being fabulous friends here, and fabulous community, beautiful landscape, great food. What else is there? Well, there's a legacy, I think, of, of, you know, the early arrival in the 70s, the late 60s and 70s of, of, of large, relatively large numbers of people who, who were looking for a new way to live and engage with, with the natural world as well as, as well as the economic world, if you like. And uh, we saw a concentration of people who, who were, were, you know, back to nature, if you like, but, but deeply concerned both, both spiritually and, and from a humanist perspective about, about the way we engaged with nature, the values that we gave expression to and the harm that we had done to that point to, to the natural world. So these were people who were motivated to change things. They were also very quick to engage and re-engage in political processes, in activism, and, uh, you know, basically putting themselves on the line. The transitions that you and I and others have lived through, even in recent times, are, are quite profound and quite remarkable. So is Byron adaptable? Yes, it is. But is it changing uh, into things and, and, and moving into places where we'd prefer it to go or would like it to go or that are true to the values that we grew with? That's a really good open question and uh, I would suggest that the transformative power of, of economics that we currently see manifest in our area, uh, it's not all good. Probably like many people, there's, an, there's part of me that's grieving for what we're losing One of the great joys of living up here in Mullumbimby has always been the diversity of the community. You've got all sorts of beliefs. You've got the, the kind of neo-pagan animistic Earth tribe people going right through to Jehovah's Witnesses, Seventh-day Adventists. You've got um, every cuisine you can imagine from breatharian to vegan to vegetarian to ovo-pescatarian to ovo-lacto-pescatarian, anything you like. You can, and, and, the, and the restaurants cater to all these different beliefs and you can have coffee 50 different ways. COVID and vaccination is really testing us because it's actually alienating one group of people from the other. And Mullum's never faced this before. We've all had people who've been anti-vax, but they didn't, it didn't matter. But suddenly it all matters. So it's a complete dilemma. And it is really dividing the community. So we're having to have meetings now to iron out some of the common ground, if you like, so we can still talk about the things that really matter to us. One while you're young, because you're long time dead, right? Hmm? 
And I had a lot of fun when I was young. Travelling the countryside, met a lot of nice people. And still meeting nice people through my artwork. And that's what life is all about, Richard. Be happy. That's what I do. I sit back when I'm on my own. And just look. Feeling, good feeling. This is unique. Very special. Very special. Well, a lot of people are going to love this, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. It's good to know that you're making other people happy. I just pop. Mm. And, that's, and that's what life's all about. Making other people happy. And this has got a very good story all the way up it, hasn't it? Yeah. Important story. Very good, yeah. Very important. One of a kind. All these totemic animals, what part did they play in your life? The carpet snake played a lot. Yeah. Mm. And the river was real clean, the sea bluey green. Now it's all with all the fertilizer and stuff that runs through the river. Rubbish. Mad, Although it's mad made. It's Rubbish. looking really beautiful today. Mm. It's looking so beautiful. All the rain washing things through and it's settling. It's looking so good. Yeah, there were that many dolphins up there. Yeah. So I go right up. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And the goannas? Goannas and the totem and a bunch of them naturally. So we played a lot of them. We played a lot. Yeah, I like to get up a goanna, goanna headland and walk around there. What is his character? Do you think this is representing his character? Yes. Mm. Once you start, it just fall into place. Go with the flow. Go with the flow where the goo go, go. See that bridge? It's a bittersweet day for us. This wonderful pole being Digby's last public artwork. Thank you for commemorating Digby with the beautiful plaque with his favourite saying, just be yourself, don't be anyone else. And it's a fitting remembrance to him. As I said at his funeral, he was fearless with colour and that proves it. He went to put colours together that I used to think, oh, that's not gonna work, but it always did, <laughs> always worked. <laughs> He was truly honoured to be asked to paint this pole and what a magnificent le legacy he has left. Congratulations to the hardworking committee on this fantastic entranceway to Mullumbimby. Really hard to, to, um, to talk about him because it, it's, it's a big part of me that's missing and um, it'll always be there with me for, for a long time and um, I'm just, so pleased and happy that everything went well and um, I'd just like to give the opportunity to thank everybody who um, gave me the opportunity to um, be a part of this project and I'm, I'm so happy to be, be part of that. Thank you. Hello everybody. Um, very happy to be here and thank you for the opportunity. We believe it's the iconic gateway to Mullumbimby, and we're proud to be a part of Mullumbimby, and we love the first people's connection it makes to Mullumbimby, which is so important to us. I'm Linda Dean, and today I'm representing the Northern Rivers Community Foundation. We've encouraged people to realise that communities can get together and achieve great things, and this is where we're sitting today in an amazing community effort, and it's wonderful that so many people have been involved and worked together to create something in perpetuity for the community because if we haven't got each other, 
We haven't got anything, so thanks. I thank everybody. Well, he thanked the Honourable Ben Franklin and the New South Wales Government, the Byron Shire Council, the NRCS and the Uplift, um, Shallow Wood and all of the other many sponsors that have made it possible. I'd also personally like to thank Andy Erskine, who has, without his help from Council, was just invaluable. He, he just made the project so much easier in communicating to Council and everything with us and for offering really good insights and help along the way. So thank you, Andy. And of course, I really would like to thank Nicola too. She's been just fantastic to work with in the painting and doing work within the Rotunda and really helping to get things all organised. So thank you. Delta, can I say as well, thank you for a beautiful welcome to country. I'd like to um, also acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, pay my respect to elders past, present and emerging. Um, and note, and note uh, your T-shirt that this always was and always will be Aboriginal land. But from my perspective, community is critical and there are a lot of leaders in this space, but when there's a good idea, it needs to be driven by somebody. And that's what we've seen with Richard. He He's someone who's really brought everybody together, um, a very disparate group of people, um, to make this happen and to bring life to what is in effect an acknowledgement of our Indigenous heritage, um, a beautiful cultural space, um, but also a wonderful community space as well. To have all three of those things in one location is just stunning. But ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say thank you um, for this space. Uh, it's an extraordinary space, Richard, to you, to Sunita, to everyone who's been a part of it. Um, this is the definition of what it means to be in a magnificent community and the, the outcome of the community that we live in can be seen today. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here and to declare. <laughs>
community should be very proud of this. What do you reckon, Richard? Well, I know they will be very proud, and it's a, it's part of the pathway that we all have to we all have to begin to understand better, isn't it? That's him. That's him. That's him.